Hey everybody, welcome to the Louise book series. I'm Christina, K-R-I-S-T-I-N-A-D-E-L-U-I-S-E. And uh, before we get started, please like and subscribe to my channel. Let me know I'm doing okay. I have no fancy graphics. I have no fancy stuff going on anywhere. Um, it's just me talking about Star Trek or me talking about a book. So there's no stuff. So I hope I can hold your attention without the the gimmicks that everybody else uses. And before we get started, um, this is just seven, and I want to say that um, I tried an experiment with disc five. And you will have to pull it up manually. I think I'm not exactly sure why it hasn't gotten that many views. I did try an experiment, two experiments with disc five. I tried to be a little fancy schmancy and um turns out there were some copyright issues with me trying to be fancy but it says those vendors allow xyz so but it hasn't got many views so i'm thinking maybe it was tied up some way so you might want to just pull it up um G. louise book series uh just five uh star trek next generation of course um so today we're going to be talking about um, conspiracies and the neutral zone. And um, I like the little bit of flirting in the beginning of the episode with Riker and Troy. Then the captain receives an emergency message from Starfleet warning um, of hate and conspiracy theory. Um, um, he receives a, uh, an emergency message on a secure channel. And I want to say up front that I really don't like conspiracy type shows. I just, I just don't like them. But, um, so anyway, but, and then we see that we're dealing with those people that came previously to do the investigation of the Enterprise. And Remick was part of that. And they did all that investigation only to find out that the guy just wanted to promote Picard to Starfleet. And no, Picard's like, no, I'm going to stay here. So they're here again. And they message him, and they want him to meet them on an abandoned planet because the four of them say that Starfleet is being taken over, and um, they don't know by who. But uh, so they meet on this abandoned planet, and... Then um, they they think the Starfleet rank, ranking officers are not themselves. And Picard then consults Troy for her advice. And Picard gives her um, information on the uh, secret mission. And she says, well, you know, sh you should tell your officers. And he's like, no, not yet. And then Beverly comes on the bridge. And she's like, oh, I heard the mission was here. Did you see Walker? And he lies, even though Walker said, please give Beverly my best, but I guess he can't give Beverly his best until this thing is over. Make him a little tiny, 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 tiny. I guess we'll leave it like this. Um, so then they find out that the ratio is destroyed. Then uh, Picard tells Riker about the conspiracy theory. And then he has uh, data investigate um, some transmissions and some mission logs and stuff like that. And data finds out that there are some really weird requests. So they head back to Earth. And um, Quinn goes to the end of when they get to Earth. Quinn goes to the Enterprise by himself, and he's carrying. Uh, Case. And um, I want to step aside right here to go. All right. How many of you are Stargate SG-1 fans? And while Star Trek may have gotten there first, because they were here kind of first, how many of you look at this and think, Gawood! The Simpsons! They're trying to take over Earth! 
And then, of course, we see the, the Sylvia. And then Picard goes down to Earth by himself and leaves Riker on board the ship. And I think that when the Admiral first attacked Riker, he's a little too slow to conquer him. And that kind of, you know, sets it up for, oh, my God, there's a little bit of a cliffhanger going into commercial. And, you know, it sets it up. And then they come, and um, Quinn tries to blame it on Riker, et cetera, et cetera. And they get um, him in the, the doctor's office, and she, at the last minute, discovers the symbiote. And then um, they're a little... Uh, they set it up, one of those classic, classic... Um, you know, when you're reading the mystery book and the good guy finally tracks down the bad guy and they have the bad guy does the big reveal and explains his mission and explains what he wants to do, right? They have this big plot reveal and they the, the bad guy tells the good guy all this stuff because he thinks he's going to kill the bad guy and get away, I mean, the good guy and get away with it, right? Big, huge standard plot reveal. And then um, the episode ends. It's just like, what? Oh, we'll finish it. They're like, well, those things are still out there. They sent the beacon signal. And that's like, oh, come on. They sent the beacon signal. Let's investigate. All right. One more time. The neutral zone. Star Trek Voyager, the 37, do we see something similar, do we not, I'm telling you, and the, when they're wiping down the, there's cryogenic chambers, how many of you out there going, they need a dish towel, they need a towel or gloves, because their hands are going to get all wet and cold and icky. You need a dish towel. You need a glove. You need something to do the wiping. Some paper towels? What's with this? And um, that lady that plays Gracie, um, she was on Family Ties a little bit and Hill Street Blues. And she was on Matthew Star and Hunter. And I kept, I don't know why... In my brain, I kept seeing um, the actress from Terminator. I don't know why. She's a completely different person, but that was in my head. And the Anthony James character, he was on The Rookies, Charlie's Angels, Starsky, and Hutch, Buck Rogers, The 18th, and Quincy. All good shows back in my brain. And I like how when Claire wakes up, and the first thing she sees is Worf, and she faints. <laughs> but... Did you, ever, um, did you ever notice that when people are called away from the bridge, like, you know, uh, Data go here or set an away team goes there, whatever, there's always another person that comes and sits down in their seat? Would you not have liked to have been that person? You're an extra. You're going to get paid a couple dollars. You don't, have any, you don't have to worry about lines. All you have to do is walk off the turbo lift or walk around the side. And sit in the chair. That's it. And you can tell your friends and family that you were on Star Trek Next Generation. There you are. They watch you. That's it. That's all you do is walk in the room. But hey, come on. Who wouldn't like those creds? Would you not like those creds to be an extra? And you wonder how they picked them. Because they're all different. Every episode, there's different people. And wouldn't it have been a cool... Maybe they had a lottery or, uh, you know, 
they had some extras or a casting call. Hey, we just need this type. Or maybe they didn't even need a type. Maybe they just picked a number. I don't know. But I, it's just something I was thinking about. I was like, you know, that would have been awesome if they had a group of people as extras or friends and family or a brother or sister who could just walk on and sit down in the chair. Wouldn't that have been awesome? But, um, and the, and the, uh, the Anthony James character, he was on the rookies, um, Charlie, um, Charlie's Angels, Dusky Hutch, Buck Rogers, the A-Team, Quincy, again, all my shows. Um, but did you ever wonder how there's always one person in every crowd who's got to make a fuss, who's, who thinks that um, they're better than everybody because they have more money or they have political power or they have status or they think they're somebody. There's always one. And he plays that, that, you know, I've got money in Geneva and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, what, yeah. They're, they're trying to tell him that none of this stuff exists 300 years from now. It must be nice not to worry about having to pay bills or anything. Wouldn't that be cool? No bills, own apartment. You can just live there, maybe go to school, take some classes. You don't have to actually earn a living. Wouldn't that be cool? Work on a starship. Um, that would, would just be so awesome to be able to live without having those kind of stresses. And these people were like, you know, I'm telling you, we're talking the 37s. They had a few more, though. And they still have to deal with the Romulans, and they've had no contact with them for over 50 years. So uh, the Romulans would like a meeting with Starfleet per Riker to see how Starfleet has advanced in technology. And we would also like to see how they've advanced. And they're setting this whole episode up. They're setting this whole episode up, right? And um, Troy uses genealogy to find Claire's descendants so she can maybe go live with them. It, it's, just, it's just amazing. Of course, if you don't have descendants, there won't be anybody for you. That's the one thing about um that would be you know if you were frozen if you had a large family and you're frozen then even a hundred years from now you might have descendants but um if you didn't have any children then i mean not only would you come back uh you know healthy but you would come back completely alone and you wouldn't know anybody or anything or anybody anywhere. I know that would be kind of scary, don't you think? But I mean, this James guy, he was like, I want to talk to Geneva. Uh huh. But I mean, Troy said early in this episode that the Romulans uh, will not strike first, they don't want the blame. So Picard is correct in waiting. But everybody else on the bridge is like, no, let's get them, let's call Bandelaria, let's. This, let's do that. And Picard's like, no, we're gonna be peaceful and we're gonna talk to them. And it turns out that their uh outposts were destroyed, as were our outposts destroyed, and they would like to work to well, we propose to them and they accept our offer of working together to find out who destroyed the outpost. And again, the episode ends. Like what? That's it? I'm, we spend so much time, we have something, we set it up in the beginning, we set it up at the end, and all this stuff in between has nothing to do with the beginning and the end. I mean, we don't get an answer. We want a few episodes like this. So what do you think? Um, and, uh, when the Romulans were back, I'm like, hold your guys! <laughs> I'm sorry. Being a child of the 80s, I'm sorry, my old references. Um, but, uh, so this is a little short today, but please don't forget to check out, um, Disc 5. And, um, please take the time to like and subscribe to my channel. Let me know I'm doing a good job. Um, likes mean a lot. They're 
the life and bread of YouTube, I guess. I don't know. I mean, um, I'm trying my best. Uh, all these people rant and rave about how to get a million views in a week. Yeah, uh-huh. Well, I don't have that technology. I don't have the, the computer technology or the capability or whatever to do all this stuff to get all these, you know. It's just me talking. So um, please check out all my videos, all my book videos. Uh, and uh, please check out my Star Trek videos. And I will continue. Oh, that's what I wanted to look. We wanted to see. You know, these things are just like, uh -huh. But I wanted to see if. Ah. Oh, so after. Oh, so they start over again. Okay, so then we'll start with disc one for season two. I was wondering how that went because I can barely see the lettering. It's just so light. And I wonder how many people have this set and all these little tabs are broken. They're just useless. I'd prefer the little envelope, but I don't. I want to keep it in its original case. I mean, you can buy those little pocketbook thingies, but I, I, I'd rather keep it in the original case. So please take the time to like and subscribe. I hope you like my video. I hope you check out this five. And um, please continue to, I will continue doing this. We'll do start um, season two. And, oh, you know, Tasha, when, when, um, when Stan and Darity left Charm, they took her name off the credits almost instantly. But Tasha Yaw's name continued the whole season on the credits. I don't know why she didn't wait till like the, the end episode to, you know, see what they wanted to do. The fact that she left almost in the middle of the season. But anyway, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out my video. I really appreciate it. Share it everywhere, please. I'm not that TikTok or Instagram or any of those other places familiar with. So please do the sharing for me. Go ahead and uh, please check out my blunders on disc five. Thank you.